You're watching Capital City Sunday. Welcome back. I'm joined by Brian Style, Republican candidate for the 1st Congressional District. Thank you for joining me again. Emily, thanks for having me. All right. So I think most um, eyes were all caught the nation's attention. I want to first weigh in on Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing. Despite the outcome, I want to ask you um, about the process, about the process about sexual harassment, sexual assault claims that come through Congress. Um, as someone who wants to be in Congress, do you think that process needs to be handled a little bit differently? The, the process is completely broken. I mean, you look at the testimony, really heartfelt testimony uh, by both individuals, and more than anything, you get frustrated when you look at the process that's going on in Washington. It's broken. We're not the people in Washington are not getting the work done on behalf of the American people and kind of put on a manufacturing hat. If you have a broken product, you have a broken process, right? And so we need to go in and address the process that we're looking at these instances uh, and fix it so we don't have this problem again. And so some of that is where people have evidence and not keeping it under wraps until the final hour. Um, there's process uh, reviews that can be done. There's going to be some real lessons learned on this case, and it's darn frustrating how this played out. And it just kind of makes a circus and a mess of Washington all around. Do you think the FBI should be allowed to step in on their own, or should lawmakers decide to investigate these claims? I think there's going to be a lot of lessons learned in this process. I think everybody looks at how this played out. Uh, it's just a complete disaster, and it's a complete circus. And so what we need to see is a full review of how this played out from the beginning to where we are today, and to figure out how do we go through this so next time uh, when these types of very serious charges are brought forward, we don't end up with a circus. We end up with a much more thoughtful, uh, deliberative process beginning earlier. Now, um, there's dueling ads about manufacturing, and your manufacturing background has been questioned by your opponent, um, uh, Randy Bryce. And in his ad, um, he is um, calling you a lion, Lion Brian style, um, because of you. He is claiming that you don't work in manufacturing. You're a corporate attorney for manufacturing companies, you have been. Do you want to explain your background um, working in manufacturing and about the dueling ads? I appreciate you bringing it up. So I'm proud of my background in manufacturing. I've worked for manufacturing companies local in Rock County for the past 10 years. Just this week, the Washington Post uh, reviewed my opponent's ad and gave it three Pinocchios, saying it's not accurate and it's not truthful. And so if you look at the Washington Post calling them out uh, for these false attacks, it's frustrating. People want to have a conversation about the issues. And you look at my background, it's in manufacturing, I have a law degree, proud of that background, proud to have a business degree. Uh, and I think that's kind of the background that I think will be really productive if given the opportunity to serve in Washington, taking that private sector experience and saying, how do we get more done on behalf of the American people? Now, um, when it comes to a corporate attorney, what exactly do you do to clarify with people? Sure. So inside of a you know, manufacturing company in the modern era, you have people with all different backgrounds. You have HR, you have legal, uh, you have marketing. So you have a large team of people with different diverse backgrounds. And so my job is often focused on how do you grow jobs? How do you build on the companies that we have? How do you negotiate sales agreements to be able to ship our products around the globe? And so that's what I was focused on day in and day out. Uh, and I'm proud of the background that I have working for local Rock County manufacturing companies. Um, speaking of advertisements, um, you recently have one out with your opponent's brother in it. Um, I think we should be very careful. So I don't have an ad out. The Republican uh, Party. No, the, there's a third party group, third party, uh, okay. not a Republican Party, not myself. A third party group has placed that ad. And I think there's confusion on that point. And I think that's important to make very clear that that's not, a, not an ad that I've run. Uh, it's a third party group uh, and they're, they're running that ad. They're free to speak as they see fit. Um, I'm proud to have the endorsement though of lots of folks inside the law enforcement community, including police officers in Milwaukee, including all six sheriffs from the first congressional district. So Republicans and Democrats alike across the first congressional district involved in the law enforcement community have made it very clear that I am advocating policies that make our communities safer. My opponents advocating policies that would make our communities less safe, and I think that's why all six sheriffs from the 1st Congressional District, Republicans and Democrats alike, have united and said that I'm the one who's right to represent us in Congress to make our community safer. Now, um, Randy Bryce's mom wants the ad to be removed, even though if you're not paying for the ad. Um, do you think the ad is inappropriate? Do you think ads are getting too nasty nowadays? 
I'm not focused on what third party groups are doing. I'm focused on what I can do. What I'm doing is having a positive conversation about how we're going to grow the economy. I'm having a positive conversation about how we give individuals opportunities to have access to affordable, effective education, how we lower the cost of health care. So I'm not focused on the third party groups. I'm focused on what I'm bringing to the table. And I'm bringing to the table a positive, issues focused campaign about how we're going to grow the economy and how we're going to help the American worker. Now, speaking of health care, you just mentioned that. Um, big, big issue, I think, in many races and when it comes to protecting pre-existing conditions. Um, Governor Walker and Brad Schimmel are supportive of a lawsuit that would basically eliminate many parts of Obamacare. Do you think Governor Walker should drop that lawsuit? I'm following the lawsuit closely. I think uh, regardless of the lawsuit or not, I think we can all agree that we need to lower the cost of health care. And at the same time, we can do that while protecting individuals who have pre-existing conditions. And so I think it's not one without the other. So I'll, I'm following that lawsuit to see how that'll play out. I don't think that's, that decision is imminent. But I do look at saying, how do we ultimately lower the cost of health care? We need to focus on that. We need to get rid of the top line talking points, dig into the issue and say, how do we lower the cost of health care and make it real clear? You can do that while still protecting individuals with pre-existing conditions, which we absolutely should do. So do you think he should keep the lawsuit as is? I mean, it's Brad Schimmel, who's a tied with other attorney generals on the lawsuit. Do you think he should make the right move and drop the lawsuit so no matter what happens, uh, pre-existing conditions are continue to be protected in Wisconsin? Well, I think no matter what happens, pre-existing conditions will be protected uh, in Wisconsin and across the United States. And so what we've seen, though, is the Obamacare that came through, what it did was it drove the cost of health care higher. And what it did was make, make health care less accessible to individuals and families who are trying to obtain that health care in the first place. And so what we need to do is step away from a government takeover of health care, which is advocated by my opponent. We need an approach that focuses very clearly on individuals and doctors making health care decisions that are in their own best interest, which will ultimately bring costs down and improve quality. Um, now, immigration enforcement agents were around Wisconsin this past week. Um, your opponent has been vocal about abolishing ICE in general. Um, what are your views about the presence here? Um, and, you know, they made multiple arrests, but they did not, you know, let law enforcement know they were here. That is why a lot of, com you know, community officials are a little upset. Just your views um, about your opponent wanting to abolish ICE in general and how you feel that they were here basically unannounced kind of made a lot of people uneasy. So I think there's always room for more transparency on what our government's doing, but I think in large part when we look at my opponent's position to abolish ICE, I think that makes our communities less safe. Uh, you look at what ICE uh, is doing, especially along the I-94 corridor and the I-90 corridor, as it's trafficked from Chicago north to Milwaukee, Madison, and the Twin Cities. You see the ICE enforcement as it directly affects drug trafficking, as it addresses terrorism, as it addresses human trafficking. So these are really serious issues, and my opponent's view of abolishing ICE would make our communities less safe uh, rather than making our communities more safe. And I think that's why you see all six sheriffs, Democrats and Republicans alike, across the 1st Congressional District of Southeast Wisconsin endorsing my campaign. Now, with ICE coming here unannounced, though, do you think that was proper to not let anyone know and keeping, you know, talking about keeping communities safe? A lot of law enforcement agencies were talking about, well, if we don't know and we see men in ballistic vests and weapons, you know, we might counter and ruin their raids or something along those lines. Do you, do you think there was maybe a problem there? or Maybe the policies need to be um, reviewed when it comes to officials just coming into a state and not letting anyone know? I think there's always opportunities to figure out how do we make our communities more safe and how do we communicate between different law enforcement agencies. I don't think that's the wrong question to ask. But I think what we're looking at is where my opponent supports abolishing ICE, where that group is working to keep our community safe. They're working to prevent terrorism, working to prevent drug trafficking, working to prevent human trafficking. Those policies make our communities less safe. We need to stand with men and women of law enforcement to make our communities more safe. All right, we've got about a minute left, and I just want to ask you, because it's, it's an issue that is always going to be brought up. There was a workplace shooting in Middleton um, where an employee went in and rang some shots off. Luckily, everyone was okay, but it just brings back to the issue of gun laws, how he got this weapon, you know, his void card was taken away at some point. Um, 
what if 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 anything, where do you think you can reach middle ground with Democrats if you are elected into Congress when it comes to gun laws, gun reforms? I think more than anything, we need to enforce the gun laws that are on the books and to make sure that we have the resources to do that. You look at, I'll take an example of the shootings that go on in Chicago versus the number of arrests that occur in that city. That disparity is dramatic. We need to take the gun laws that are on the books and enforce those laws on the books to put criminals behind bars. And so as we see what's happened in the gun debate, we've lost the focus on actually enforcing the gun laws that are on the books. I think we could make significant headway uh, in preventing these types of tragedies if we addressed and enforced the gun laws that are on the books today. So you don't think any more additional reforms need to be added? What about, I mean, universal background checks? I think more than anything, the gun laws that are on the books today aren't being enforced as the strength that they could. And I think that would have an immediate and significant impact on addressing some of these crimes that are occurring in our community. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining me. Coming up, the CEO from the Latino Chamber of Commerce joins me. Stay with us.